Hey everyone, it's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of Savant's Tech Talk. The pandemic has been tough on people. It closed businesses, shut down factories, and has been a headache for many. But of course, there is always a silver lining to everything. This pandemic also gave support to home-based businesses and apps. And yes, you're right. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the most used app during the pandemic. Zoom. But of course, since the pandemic, Zoom became huge. Almost every student, teacher, or business official now uses Zoom globally for their study and meetings. And apart from this, we even use Zoom in our daily lives to remotely see our loved ones. People even went a step further and started Zoom parties. And this is where each participant parties at their home and while they're connected to Zoom. In today's video, we're gonna have a look at what makes Zoom unique. And we're also gonna have a high level look at the technology behind Zoom to draw inspiration from if you're looking to make an app similar to Zoom. Now, if you find this topic interesting, don't forget to let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. Do you use Zoom? If so, let us know some of the ways that you use it. Now, obviously Zoom is a video conferencing tool. You can install it on your PC, your smartphone, your tablet, your laptop, even your smart home appliances. The basic purpose of Zoom is to support online meetings for businesses working remotely. Zoom can render HD video and audio. And the thing that I found really interesting about Zoom is the amount of participants you can have. If you have the free version, you can have up to 100 participants. And if that's not enough, if you go with one of the paid plans, you could have up to 1,000 participants. That's a lot. Many people didn't know about Zoom before 2020 but now almost every office and school uses it. The use of the Zoom mobile app has increased to sit by 700% in a single month. So now that we know that Zoom is used for audio, video conferencing, and high quality calls, let's have a look at some of the other highlight features that make Zoom stand out. One of the best features that Zoom offers is that it lets team members record the screen or session. Screen sharing. Now, if you've ever done a physical presentation, then you know how a presentation works. You make it on your laptop, connect it to a projector, and project it onto a screen for everyone to see. Zoom uses the same feature and lets you share your laptop or even your cell phone screen with other members. And this makes presentations much easier and increases communication amongst team members. Hand raising. During a meeting or in a classroom, it's polite if you have a question to raise your hand. Zoom tried to mimic this feature and they actually have an option and the ability for you to raise your hand digitally during a conference call. All you would have to do is click the button and in doing so, the host and other participants would see that you have your hand raised so that they're aware that you have a question and they can provide you the opportunity to express your opinion. Polls and chat. The chatting option, as you would expect, allows Zoom members to chat with each other during the meeting. The chat is always visible and everyone can see it. Also, the participants or the host can also create a poll to gather opinions about specific topics. And this is an important one. The ability to mute participants. The meeting host has the authority to mute any or even all of the participants during the video conference call. Also, the host has the ability to kick a participant out if they need be. And the reason for this is to be able to stop and prevent there from being any distracting noises during the call and also to maintain discipline. So you could think of this as the modern day version of being sent to the hall by the teacher. Background blur. For many people, one of the biggest hurdles to remote meetings is their home. A lot of people are burdened with not having their own workspace or office inside their homes. And sometimes, of course, kids, pets, or even anything in the background can be distracting. Zoom did their best to put something in place to prevent that from happening. And to do so, they introduced the blur effect for the background. Not only that, but they also offer other apps that can make a meeting look more official. So in case someone's having a sleepy or having a bad Monday, for example, then Zoom also has their beauty filter to make a person look fresh for say, a job interview they have. Now let's start to have a look at how you can go about making an app like Zoom. Now keep in mind, this video is not telling you to make an exact replica of Zoom, but you can draw inspiration from Zoom and look at how they created features that mimicked how people behave in the real world such as presenting and hand raising. You can try and look at how people behave in social situations in regards to your target audience and try and mimic those behaviors. I just wanna quickly say, if you're still watching, I think that deserves a click on that like button. Also, I'm curious, do you have any features in mind that you would like to see Zoom or an app like Zoom include? Let us know in the comments down below.
Now let's look at development. Zoom has both web and mobile app versions. And if you're making a video conferencing app and want it to be successful, then you most likely want to make both a web and mobile app version as well. You can hire your own in-house developers, or you can hire a development firm to build out your web and mobile apps. Your team should include a project manager, a tech lead, a pair of iOS and Android developers, and a backend developer. For Android, you can use Java, and for iOS, you can use Swift or Objective-C. You can also use frameworks like React Native that can work for both iOS and Android, which is what we would recommend. And for web-based, you can use CSS, HTML, and JavaScript for the app. Other powerful tools like Angular, Vue, React.js would work as well. If you're already familiar with any of our other how to make an app like videos, then you already know that we highly recommend that you start with an MVP that focuses on the core essential features of your app. You should focus on the bare minimum requirements to get your point across. And this is to save yourself money by not overdoing it on features and then finding out your users aren't really interested in them. Build the MVP, gain traction, and collect data from your users and use that data to decide what aspects and features are best to invest in, or maybe even take away to improve their experience. Just a quick FYI, if you're wanting to watch any of our other how to make an app like videos, then the video how to make an app like Uber will be included in the end screen at the end of this video. And I'll also include a link to our how to make an app like playlist in the description of this video. So now let's discuss the UI UX. You need to work hard on your app's interface. Make sure that all the necessary icons are there, but also make sure that the controls don't take over the screen because you don't want any interruptions to take away from concentration on the video. Make the navigation simple. Let the users easily grasp all the functions without struggling to find them. Hire a good UI UX engineer along with a quality engineer to look over these issues. Simplicity is key here. Now let's take a closer high level look at the tech stack of Zoom. When it comes to Android, Zoom uses Java and Kotlin as the main programming languages. It uses Android Studio as the main toolkit and Android SDK as the official SDK. For video chatting, Zoom uses WebRTC. For iOS, Zoom uses Swift as the main programming language. It uses Apple Code as the primary toolkit and iOS SDK as its official SDK. And just like Android, Zoom uses WebRTC for video chatting, software development kit, and API. The WebRTC uses three APIs that include MediaStream, RTC Peer Connection, and RTC Data Channel. Other third-party APIs used by Zoom are Contestfly, Willio, Comet Chat, and PubNub. Backend. For backend technology, you need to understand how to create the server that's responsible for the proper video functioning of your platform. You can use a ready-made backend as a service solution. Some video conferencing apps even require a server made from scratch. So you can think about that as well. Zoom uses AWS, Microsoft, and its own servers to process hundreds of thousands of calls instantly with little to no delays. So now let's dig deeper into Zoom's cloud and video infrastructure. The cloud network. The Zoom app contains a system of data centers. These centers are interlinked via private connections that are regularly maintained and optimized by their team of experts. They ensure that the connectivity is secure globally and that the connection is smooth. Zoom uses about 15 data centers globally for this cause. Distributed architecture. Zoom works on a distributed architecture instead of a centralized approach. The distribution over data centers allows people to join the nearest data center for the best connectivity and private connection. So your video conferencing app should work on it as well to improve the experience for your users. Multimedia routing. This feature delivers multiple video streams from other members of the meeting to the client's device, and this reduces energy consumption. This routing can also support 15 times more participants than a standard MCU. And this also means that if you run into issues, they will switch to a different video stream for you. Multi-bitrate encoding. Each stream in the stream routing can adjust to multiple resolutions. And this feature eliminates the need for encoding or decoding streams on each endpoint, maximizing the performance. It also increases or decreases the video quality according to your internet speed for the least interruption. Application layer quality of service. The application layer quality of service in Zoom ensures the best audio video quality and features like screen sharing and audio video optimization according to bandwidth. Now let's have a look at some of Zoom's features that your Zoom-like app can draw inspiration from. 
Zoom has a wide variety of features, including user registration, profile management, add and search contacts, general settings, chat and poll, group audio video calls, host controls, screen sharing, push notifications, virtual hand raising, call controls such as mute, video, off, screenshot, screen record, encrypted calls, notes blocking, virtual background, and in-app purchases. And last but certainly not least, testing. Testing your video conferencing app on various platforms will be the last thing to do. Ensure that it works smoothly on all devices and test it on all high and low network connections. And when it's done, your Zoom-like app is ready to hit the market. So there we have it. We've taken a close look at what helps to make Zoom stand out, as well as a high-level look at the tech stack involved. If you're building an app like Zoom, let us know if you drew any inspiration from this video, whether in regards to the features or the technology involved. Once again, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.